So welcome to this month's uh, community call. And it's the, wow, we've now been doing this for uh, over a, a year now. And, and Tim started this, um, oh, like I said, over a year ago as a way to give um, value to the community and, and also as a way to connect and bring people together every month. And so these have evolved into something that have um, been quite uh, quite a great resource for people who are looking to, to get going, um, people who are looking to get started. And um, today's speaker is, is no different and, and a really valuable resource. So let's get right into it today. And I want to introduce uh, Denarius. Denarius is a, uh, I'm going to read his bio because I think it's, uh, it's worth uh, the, the time here. He's a, an international speaker. He's an author, a branding strategist, and his passion is empowering people to have a larger vision uh, for their lives. He's the founder of, of Motivated Investor Groups, and uh, it's a consulting firm that helps people maximize their lives and their business and their leadership potential. And what I, I think is really uh, such a, a huge part of Denarius' story, though, is, is where he started. And uh, he had a, a pretty challenging time. Um, he, you know, his, his story, and you guys can read his book, and he goes into a little bit, but he survived a summer with only $1.78 in his pocket, and he's able to turn that around and um, you know, going from homeless to now owning multiple homes and, and teaching people how to invest and teaching people how to grow their brand and their business. Now, um, it's a, it's a real kind of rags to riches story. And so Denarius, I'll let you go into a little bit more about that, but I'd love to, for you to share kind of, um, you know, share with us about your story and then share with us. I think what you're going to get into today is really the tools and the mindset that it took to go and to take you out of that place and into uh, the position that you're in today. So thanks again for, uh, for spending some time with us in areas and, and feel free to take it away, my man. Perfect. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys see my screen at all? No screen yet. It looked like it went away, but before it was up. So if you want to uh, reshare it again. Um, yeah, let's see. give me one moment. Yep, it's up. We're ready to go. Perfect. Again, uh, thank you guys for having me here at the One Life community. Um, I am very humble and blessed to be here. Um, thank you for the intro, Hector. Again, a little bit by myself. My name is Denarius Lewis, a motivational speaker, author, activist. Uh, like he said, I wanted, once upon a time, I was a young little 19-year-old kid surviving the summer of 2013 with $1.78. Um, at my very lowest, all I had to do was the only thing I really had for myself was my attitude. And so what we're going to go through is how basically anyone can really use their subconscious mind to really imprint themselves to manifest the life that they really want. I got really involved in the, the thing called the secret law of attraction, positive energy, light energy, you know, good energy attracts good energy, bad energy attracts bad energy. And so um, I'll go through this presentation, just helping people really define their goals, um, how they can really accomplish, you know, their life going in 2020 and onward. Um, like a little, like I said, a little bit about myself. I started in 2013 with a dollar seventy-eight cents. Um, my big passion is working with vulnerable communities. So I've been a personal care attendant, working with um, individuals who have mental health disabilities for the past three years, going on four. People who have dementia, people who are vulnerable physically, uh, people who just grew up with or were born with ailments. But what I like to do and approach with my clients is just encourage them to be the best versions that they can be. Uh, my big my big thing is I believe we all have insecurities, but our perception of our insecurities limit us. So if we're able just to tackle our insecurities and drive going drive ourselves to get out of our comfort zone, we'll find um, a lot of comfort in our discomfort. Uh, like I said, I was an, I'm an activist. I've written a couple of books. My first book I wrote was when I was 19 years old, called The Power of the Subconscious Mind, and I just released my second book called The Essence of Inspiration. Uh, throughout my years, I was homeless. I now closed on a rental property, so I found was able to accomplish my, my lifelong goal at a very young age. Um, I am the first homeowner in my family. Uh, I grew up with all renters. I, I went, when I was 23, I, started, I filed Chapter 7 bankruptcy as well, so I've had to put some years into building my credit and just putting my best foot forward. Now, what we're going to go through is what is the subconscious mind? I believe I, I have continue to realize not many people know what the conscious and subconscious mind is. So the subconscious mind is only, it only thinks in the present. Um, it doesn't know the difference between what is real and what is imagined. Your conscious mind is logical, rational, and analytical. What we're doing, what we're, how we're interacting right now is through our conscious mind. And when you, I'll throw out some nuggets, you'll learn, you'll hear some, you'll, you'll intu, your intuition will hit 
or you know reveal some things that you know when I go through this presentation, and that's those some of those things will impede and sink into your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is illogical, irrational, and non-analytical. Your, subcon your subconscious mind believes anything, whether it makes no sense, no logical sense at all. And your conscious mind knows that it takes time to act to, to, to create action goals. But in your subconscious mind, if you program it to believe anything and everything that is, that is great, you will attain it in the now. So the cool thing about the subconscious mind is many people, when they're trying to accomplish their goals, they set their goals out, you know, 30, 60, 90 days, five years from now, 10 years from now. In our minds, we all think of something that we, we, we see ourselves as a person who we want to be tomorrow. Rather than believing that we're already that person, and all we have to do is really live in the now. So, you know, one of my big goals when I was broke was to have a home. And what I did in my mind was I played a delusional game. And I, the delusional game that I created in my, my mental mind was that I am a multimillionaire. I am rich. I am happy. I, I, I am uh, wealthy, I am rich. The I am's that I had to basically hypnotize myself uh, was to change the, in, the energy that I had internally so I can manifest the things I wanted externally. So no matter where you are in your life right now, the goals that you wanna strive for, you are already in that stage. You, are already, you have to tell yourself that you have already accomplished it. You must start speaking in present tense. And once I really started to understand that, that was one of the things that really helped me catapult um, not only my success, but help others do something similar. So, uh, we'll go, and that was the beauty of that. Now, when we're starting to think positive and trying to affirm things in our life, we also have that inner conversation that's battling with us. And it's the negative energy that we have ourselves. We all can wake up in a negative mood. We can point fingers at anyone else of why we're not successful. But if we're not accountable for who we are today, how can we ever accomplish who we want to be tomorrow? So how do you fight negative energy? The world is changing, but are you? You must surround yourself with people who believe in your dreams, encourage your ideals, and support your ambitions, and bring out the best in you. If you surround yourself around negative energy, and people you have, the people you have in your circle, 100% chance you are falling to the being a negative cycle. One thing I learned when I was at my lowest, I was in college, I was in, and I looked around my circle, and a lot of my friends were, you know, college kids. You do things, when you do, when kids don't have a purpose, or people who don't have a purpose, you live purposely on purpose. And so, I call it the walking dead. And what I did was, I was just a part of the crowd. Even though I knew I was different, and I had traveled and went to three colleges in three years, I, at times, let my environment dictate my actions. And so we all have to take a realization of who is in our circle. Are they bettering us? Are they helping us? Or are they hindering us? And so if you're a person that, you know, starts to become cynical, it's may, you may just attract people who are just as cynical as you. And I started to really realize that a lot of my people in my circle, we were just going out to parties, um, looking just to have a good time rather than create a life that we could enjoy and create the, our life in the, in, the, in the way that is always uh, not an escape. And so when I was always looking for an escape, I was around negative energy. And once I really understood the secret, which is law of attraction, uh, it really helped me really understand my, pa my passion and purpose. And I suggest to anyone out there, if you guys have Netflix, if you guys could go to the store, um, this movie called The Secret. It's on Netflix, it's called The Secret. And this movie really helped me understand the, the, the law of attraction, how, why positive energy is everything. And once I really understood that positive energy is not just the way of thinking, it's a, way, it's a lifestyle. Um, I, it's something that's been helped, that has helped me catapult my success and surround myself with some like-minded people along that road. Now, how do we, how do we eliminate um, negative thinking? We must stop thinking the worst. When we wake up, sometimes our minds will play so many tricks on us that we just go on a big tangent internally of all the negative, positive, all the negative outcomes that we can, <laughs> that will actually happen. And the sad thing is, it's not even real. It's just our minds playing tricks on us and us believing that it can become, a, it can actually become something of that. Stop listening to doubters. Some of the biggest doubters in your life may be just your friends, your family, and your loved ones. 
And so if you're able to just put your best foot forward, love them from a distance, and, and you actually really understanding that everyone's path in this world is different. We're, we're, you know, there's so many different def there's so many different destinations and avenues to become successful. But in this world, you have to define what success means to you. If you again don't wake up with an attitude to go after your goals, you'll start to realize that you're either going after you're either helping someone else accomplish their goals and you're suppressing the goals that you really want to have. And if you don't wake up around the people that really push you towards the the life that you aspire to be. Um, you'll stay stagnant in your growth and you must stop feeding your insecurities like i said earlier i believe we all have insecurities we don't know why we're born with them it's either the people that we grew up with the things that we see on the tv the imagery of what beauty looks like but if we're able to tackle our insecurities we're able to overcome them and we're over we're able to not give our insecurities power stop being around people who don't fit your future and this is a very important one because sometimes we love our friends so much either they're we call them our day ones, our, our homies, our friends from, you know, high school, elementary. But we have to take a big grab at them. And, you know, we don't pass judgment on people, but we must, we must observe people. And one thing in my circle is that I realized I had a lot of friends that didn't fit my future. I love them now. They're, they're good friends from the moment. But if I looked at the goals and the things I want to achieve compared to the goals that they wanted to achieve, we were on a completely different wavelength. And when you're around people who don't fit your future, you start to feel stagnant or you start to self, be more self-critical of who you are because of your friends or of, of their success or lack of success. And there was something that really bothered me. And it just, it just you know, for the goals that I had always wanted to feel that I had accomplished, um, I went to certain friends who hadn't had that type of success and I felt, and it, it may have came off as braggish, rather to other friends who have had success or going down the same success patterns, um, it was uh, kudos to you, a pat on your back, and it was uh, more encouraging words than um, at times envious energy or envious words or passive aggressive tones. And that was something that really, really struck with me. And, you know, it's always hard when you're trying to create new friends and create new energy in your circle. But if you don't put your best foot forward and actually create, create your circle, because your circle of influence will really hinder you or excel you. And there's a quote that you'll hear in the world of motivation is that your, your, five, your, your, five, your closest five people in your, in your circle, um, you will be the average of the income that they, that they all have. And if you don't like, the, if you wouldn't want to live the lifestyle of your friends or the people in your circle, um, it's, time, it's time to start surrounding yourself with people who you would like to live, whose life you would like to live. And you must revamp your inner conversation. Our inner conversation is the conversation that we have with each other, ourselves 24-7. And that is the subconscious mind. I like, to, I like to say our subconscious mind is just our, you know, when we're, we're not speaking, but our mind is speaking. And we're coming up with all these avenues of what we want to do, where we want to go, what we want to wear. And when we start to wear certain clothes, we start to say, we'll, we'll either say we, look, we don't look good in it. Um, I don't like this color, I look fat, uh, all the negative things that our mind will play on us rather than when you actually put on that shirt, that dress, whatever you're choosing to wear that day, you'll find someone outside in the world that'll give you a compliment. And you have an aha moment in your head. I've had this plenty of times where I didn't like a shirt, it was too tight on me, I didn't like the color, whatever it may be, I didn't like my shoes. And I went out into the world and someone gave me a compliment on something that I had a couple minutes ago didn't appreciate, I didn't like, and I thought it looked completely silly. And that inner conversation is something that we always have to work on 24 seven. It is just a game that, you know, our mind plays tricks on us. We can beat ourselves up way worse than anyone else. And when we start to build, beat ourselves up internally, we'll attract people who will, again, do the same thing. So when we're able to tackle those insecurities, change your inner conversation and use the I am's of the world. I am beautiful. I am bold. I am, I am strong. I am everything I choose to be, you will start to really hypnotize yourself to attract positive situations, positive conversations, and ultimately those positive people. But if you continue to have those, if you continue to have negative conversations, you'll become a cynical person. And the weird thing that I've also learned about being negative, 
you start to have turmoil physically when you have negative conversations. Because your inner conversation with yourself can, can cause back pains, aches, weight gain, stress, the list goes on and on. And whenever, when you're able to break down all the negative things that you sometimes unconsciously do, you're able to revamp and change that conversation to, again, put yourself in a better and positive light. Now, this is the think positive system. When you're happy, you start, you're more, you're more motivated, you're enterprising, you're imaginative, you're optimistic, you're determined, you're strong, and you're ultimately encouraged. This is the ecosystem to why being positive is critical in your life. I highly recommend people who ever, no matter how sad you are or unhappy you are at certain situations in your life, do your best to be positive. Find the greater, find the salt in the grain of hay. Do your best, do your best, because it is hard, hard, hard to be positive. We can all turn on Facebook, turn on the news, and see all the ways why the world is the world, why the way, why the world it is what what it is. Whether it's in politics, whether it's in the for, the, the wildfires that we that uh, people have in um, in the West Coast. And I'm in Minnesota. I woke up today. It's negative five degrees. It was negative 25 wind chills. Despite all these things that we look at in the external world, how we approach it internally will determine how, we, how our day is affected, how our week is affected, and ultimately our attitude and the people that we, that we will attract throughout that day. So your attitude is everything. Uh, if you wake up and if let's say you're looking to get a new job, people, if you go to that job interview and you're negative and you carry that energy with you, you will experience and you'll, people will people feel energy. I am an empath. So as an empath, I feel energy when I walk into the room. And when people can sense your energy by just by the way you're carrying yourself, the energy that you carry, and how you interact with your communication, you, you will either fail at that, that interview or you will excel. But it all is determined by the attitude that you approach. And uh, at 26 years old that I am today, I've had 24 jobs. And every job that I went for, I knew that I had the job before I even was given the interview, mainly because I had a positive attitude towards before I went to the interview. I practiced all my rebuttals of what the conversation and how it may go. And I asked the questions back to the interviewer. As an interviewer, when you're going for a job, they'll ask you all the different ways. And they'll ask you at the end of the interview, do you have any questions for me? That is a prime time for you to really tackle and ask them what what made them get that job? What, what is your passion? What are their hobbies? What did the company culture look like? Because when you're interviewing with someone, it really is a conversation on, for you to really build a friend. And if you're going around in the world looking to build friends by having a positive attitude, you'll never know where those friendships can lead, lead to, and you'll never know how many opportunities that you're able to gain. You know, there, we have people in the world of network marketing. We have people in the world of business, enterprising, networking. We're not out there looking just to build connections, genuine and authentic connections. People can read the dishonesty and the disgenuineness. So we're, if we're able just to be, approach everything in a more positive attitude, you're able to have more positive results. Now we look at a happy dog. Dogs are always happy unless, they're, you know, unless their owner is unhappy. And so how do you manage positive affirmations? Throughout the day, stop and evaluate what you're thinking. If you find that your thoughts are mainly negative, try to find a way to put a positive spin on them. Your self affirmations have been shown to self affirmations have been shown to decrease health health stress. What does that do? Affirmations can boost your self esteem. Affirmations can help eliminate negative thinking. If we look at animals, animals are animals will interact in such a, a different way than humans. And I use a uh, dog as an example because even though I'm a cat person, I know all cats are not the same. You know, cats are, there's the cats that are cuddly, there's the cats who don't want to be touched. But if you look at majority of dogs, dogs love to be petted, dogs love to be snuggled, and dogs are very owner driven. And so if we're able to just look at animals and take a little bit, take some tips from them, we'll learn, you'll learn that animals are typically very happy or dogs are very happy individuals. They love treats. They love the simple things. They like walks. They like runs. And 
if you're so stressed in your life, go out in your, go out in your community and just get around the animals, get around nature. Uh, when it's not too cold out, go on a walk, go on a hike. Break free of the, of the stress that the world puts on you. Uh, I did a lot, I used to work in, on corp, in corporate. Um, I had my cubicle and I, I used to just be so stressed out just by all the workload that I had to take and create in my, and, uh, at work. And then when I had all that stress at work, I would take that stress and bring it back home. And when I brought it back home, it started to show in my, how I treated my partner at, at that time in my life and all the, also the relationship because I was too busy at, I was too busy to, to really, to really focus on anything outside of work. I was work, work, work. It was not a work-life balance. And I really started to really understand that a lot of my, a lot of my, my, my negative results, my life, my life was all and revolved around the stress that I would continue to put on myself and me not addressing the I am and how I can just change my inner conversation and do my best to not be stressed, but to take on the stress and take on the workload and be and actually comprehend that I'm able to do it rather than feel so overwhelmed. What are some improved affirmations? How to you how to rewrite your life? I these are some affirmations that I highly recommend. I'll show some um, YouTube. You can go to YouTube as well. YouTube is a, a key tool. Um, for the past five, six, seven years, I have been doing affirmations every day before I go to before I wake up and before I go to bed and throughout the day. I listen to a lot of um, Bob Proctor, Les Brown, Tony Robinson. And I listen to a, a lot of affirmations of the I am's. And you can just go on YouTube, just say, I am affirmations, type that in, and you'll see a flood of just um, articles and videos on just the, the conversation that you can change just by having that music and that, those tones uh, in the background. Uh, I am abundantly blessed. I am grateful. My happy thoughts help create my healthy body. I am happy and grateful to have lost X amount of pounds. And wellness is the natural state of my body. I am in perfect health. When, number one, when you start with I am, you will create so much power behind those words. So never use I am in a negative sense. When you start to use I am in a negative sense, you will attract that negative experience. Sometimes we wake. Sometimes we we go throughout the day. We'll wake up and we'll say, "I am tired. I am bored. I am I am fat." All these different negative things, and then you will start to believe those "I am's." So why ever why ever affirm something that you don't want? So change how that is and say, "I am positive. I am grateful. I am blessed. I am beautiful. I am strong. I am rich. I am wealthy." Despite where you are financially, spiritually, physically, create the inner conversation in a positive sense and you will create positive outcomes. And always use your IMs in present tense. Again, like I said earlier, when we start to strive for our goals, we, 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 we don't believe that we are the person that we want to be in five years. Rather than believe that we are already that person because we see it internally and all we have to do is continue to live like that externally and surround yourself with enough people who will see us as we always have seen ourselves rather than continue to disgenuously believe in a, a different outcome. When I was again at my lowest, I always knew that I wanted to be a speaker and author and, and all the weird things that I do now as an entrepreneur, but my circle didn't reflect that. And my, when your circle doesn't reflect that, your actions also won't reflect it. So speak in present tense, Understand that you are who you want to be tomorrow, today, and set your best foot forward by just changing that inner conversation and believing yourself today. And state in the positive. It's always in the positive. Never state your I am's in the negative. It won't work out for you. Negative energy attracts negative energy. Positive energy attracts positive energy. So always be positive. Always think positive, and you will always, again, experience those positive experiences. Your self-talk is everything. The world views you how you view yourself. So what is the conversation you're having with yourself? I, I Don't say anything to yourself that you wouldn't say to anyone else. If a negative thought enters your mind, evaluate it rationally, 
and respond with affirmations of what is good about you. Challenge yourself, talk, is there anything I can do to change what I feel about, feel bad about? Make a, a, a list of positive things about yourself. You want to really work on your self-talk. Again, I can't stress that enough because we are our worst enemies. The reason why we are not successful in our life is no one else's responsibility for your success besides, your, besides you. We may have grown up with broken homes. Uh, we may have grew up, in a, grew up in abusive relationships. Whatever you've gone through, for you to get out of that situation and then to make it better, it starts with your self-talk that you know you can be better and do better because you've already had that conversation with yourself. So putting your best foot forward starts with yourself in her conversation. And number one is self-love is everything. Your positive thinking is the next thing. And your insecurities are always going to be there. But you don't have to necessarily give your insecurities the power. Because once you give power to the neg negativity, it starts to expand. And it doesn't work out with anyone on the end. Now, so let's take the negative quiz. Do you complain all the time or just sometimes? Do you blame or all the time or just certain situations? Do you believe that you have no control over most of your results? Do you feel like a victim? Are you grateful for what is? Or will you be grateful when things finally start going right for you? Do you feel like things are happening to you or do you feel like things are happening through you? And the number one thing that I love to say in this one is you must be grateful for wherever you are in life. Because if you're grateful for any stage that you are in life, when you get to that stage that you want to be in life, that gratitude must also be there as well. As I look around today, I woke up and I felt grateful. I'm in a home. I have a bed. I just, I, last night, I just, I'm, I just bought my very first couch ever. And I look now that as I'm, I'm, I'm building a home, as I just got my first house, um, I look in the driveway, I have a, a decent car that doesn't, that doesn't crap, that doesn't crap out in the winter. Um, and I, and I drive, I leave my neighborhood and I see people outside in the real world that are some, that, are, that may be less fortunate. I remember a time that I used to be the person on the bus stop in neg negative three degree, three year, negative three degree weather. Um, going to my job that I didn't like, but I needed to go to the job that I didn't like so I could have money to get a car, have money to, to get a home, have the, have the things that I, was, I knew I deserved or wanted, but I just wasn't there at that time in my life. And so being grateful for where you're at, because if you woke up today, that is the first blessing. If you have shoes, if you have clothes on your back, if you have a cell phone, if you have anything that is that is others may not have in, in either in this world and in the U.S. or in third world countries, you are blessed beyond belief. And so always be grateful for where you are because once you're grateful for where you are, you'll get to where you want to be and that gratitude will stick with you. Now the law of attraction is again one of the most beautiful things in the world once you start to really address it and understand it. You must ask, you must believe, and you shall receive. The law of attraction is, an, is the attractive, magnetic, magnetic power of the universe that draws similar energies together. The law of attraction, thoughts, ideas, people, situations, and circumstances. So if you guys have a piece of paper, I highly recommend watching the movie The Secret. Again, it's on Netflix. It, it really helped me break down the law of attraction. It's, a, it's a, like a mini documentary. The next one is having a vision board. A vision board is just a compilation of photos uh, of your goals, of your home, the, your dream home, your dream car, your dream relationship, and all the things that you strive to have. You must see it and you must believe it. But for you to see it and believe it, you must first write it down. So when I first understood the law of attraction and creating that vision board, I created a vision board when I was 19 years old, and since then I've been able to accomplish a lot of the things off my vision boards, including my my partner. So again, I was striving, I was putting my best foot forward, and 
I really started to attract the relationship and the partners and the people that I wanted in my life. When I was 23 years old, the same month that I, the same month that I had to file chapter bank, chapter seven bankruptcy was the same month I got fired from my job. It was also the same month that I got dumped. And my life started to spiral, I thought internally and also externally because all the things that were happening to me and, and the ways that they were happening. But the same day that the same day that I got dumped, the very next day, I had an opportunity that PBS had picked up my story as a motivational speaker here in Minnesota. And I was being interviewed for all the things that I was doing in this community. And I realized that despite what's happening in my life externally, as long as I can continue to have a, a positive approach and attraction towards where I want to go in my career and my life, those opportunities will come full force. And it was a really big shock to me because uh, the interviewer did not know what I was going through. At that time, I, had to, I was working, I had to get a temp job just to get ends meet. I was on unemployment, but I was still speaking. I was still getting all the opportunities as a, as a deemed that a successful person would get. But again, I, I, the success that I thought I wanted or didn't have, other people thought I did. And that was enough for me to believe in myself at a time that I was getting, I was, things were spiraling, not in my favor. So when you ask, you must believe it and you will receive it. And you have to be positive behind what you're trying to attract. And once you understand that, it is you will. You, we are literally walking magnets. We are energy. And the cool thing about energy, we will attract similar energy. So law of attraction, goal setting. Your thoughts are powerful. Your thoughts are everything. You're, you must dream big. You must clarify your goals. You must use positive affirmations. You must open yourself up to infinite possibilities. And number one, the last is so important, you must take action. I can, I can rally any person, up, tell them to do all the great things and how great they are in their, in their life and give people strategically, strategic avenues to be successful in their life. But if you don't take the action behind what you need to do in your life, you'll stay stagnant. We've all been to motivational seminars, uh, watch motivational TED Talks, or, but we get that, that rally of motivation for that, for that situation and that circumstance. And then when the time comes for us to actually take action and do something, that energy that we had when we first watched that TED Talk would have diminished. We probably went to bed, we probably forgot about it, and we just put it aside. And that's why it's very critical to have a vision board in plain sight. So if you have your vision board in plain sight, you're able to see your goals daily, you're able to see them and always nudge yourself. And when you're able to nudge yourself to just that, that intuitional pull of getting out of your comfort zone, once you get out of your comfort zone, you'll find so much comfort in the discomfort. And humans, we are not built to get out of our comfort zone. And that's what when you're, because it's a habit. So if you build a habit behind getting out of your comfort zone, skydiving, doing things that are outlandish that humans typically have never not used to, I don't recommend high skydiving to every person, but just do something that scares you and you'll find joy behind what is at once, once upon a time terrifying. And once you do so, when you're building these goals, I highly recommend building a 30, 60, and 90 action plan. You plan, you take action, and you shall execute for where you want to be in 90 days in your, in your life, your career, in your business. How can you do something in the next 30 days that will manifest the success you want to have in 90 days? So today, I am on day 105 on my 30, 60, 90-day plan. And 105 days ago, my goal was to be in a home. And on October 9th, the day the weekend before the One Life Community, I was I closed my very first rental property. And in the, in the next 60 days, my 60 day plan, my 90, my 30 day plan was to close on a, on a rental property. My 60 day plan was to get a renter, and my 90 day plan was to was to eliminate the friendships and the people who don't uh, benefit my future. So for 105 days, I have not hung out with a person or a colleague that does not fit my future. Uh, I, in a 60 days, I, within a 60 day of my goals, I now have renters. 
And one of those, and all, and they all started to just pan out once I started to have clear intentions of what I wanted. And yes, it was tough. I had to block friends. I had to stop. I had friends that were, that would reach out to me on Facebook. They would write on my Facebook wall. They would write on, they would, they would um, direct message me. I had, I'm sure the person called me and texted me and I eventually started blocking the person. And what I really realized is that the person was depending upon, was depending on my success for their success. And I really had to evaluate was the relationship something that I wanted to keep in my life or was it something that I would want to just put a pause on so I can get my, myself situated. And when I was able to have a clear intention of who, I, who deserves to be in my circle, who deserves to be in my energy, I've been a happier person. I've been able to focus on my relationships in, more, in a more keen way. And I've been able to attract more business and speaking opportunities mainly because the time that I was spending dealing and putting myself in situations that didn't reflect my future or my present, I was able to now make time um, for helping other people. And that was my big gyps. My big gyp was to have more time to help other people rather than continue to hinder myself and my own growth. So when you start to take those plans, you take those actions, you must execute. So this is a little questionnaire. How much time will you put aside daily or weekly to implement this, this change on which days? You must create a calendar. Create a calendar of how much time you're going to put into your goals. No one's going to hold you accountable unless you hold yourself accountable. The standards that you set for your life, you must define and help and have a mentor or have a coach or have an accountability partner who will help you in this endeavor. Number two, to make the necessary time what will you stop doing? As I said earlier, my time was spent on that I wanted to have helping people and up and lifting people and having time to spend towards my partner and the relationships and traveling and my family. I had to stop surrounding myself with people who weren't doing something similar. So how will you stop doing something in your life to manifest things you want in your life? You must create smart goals. And smart goals are, and this is a smart goal, you must uh, be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-framed. All your goals must have a timeline behind them because we all can say we want to do something, but if we don't put a date behind when we want to accomplish it, we'll continue to put that goal off and we'll continue to not let the, set the fuel in the fire to actually go after that goal in a certain amount of time. Who will you share your goal with and how will they hold you accountable? you must have an accountability partner. And I have been blessed to have a great partner in my life, my girlfriend, who is a great accountability partner. Even when I don't ask her to hold me accountable, she definitely reminds me to. Uh, so if you're in a relationship, you have friends, you have family, if you have someone that believes in you, make them your accountability partner. An accountability partner is so crucial. When people go to the gym, you need to have a spot to lift certain weights. You have to have a gym buddy. That's basically the first step to have an accountability partner. So have a, if, you have, if you have a gym buddy, a workout buddy, why not have an accountability buddy who can hold you accountable for the things you said you were going to do at the times you were going to do it, and they'll be the person to help you go through it. How will you monitor and track progress in your change, in on this change program? Like I said, you must have the 30, 60 day, 90 day goal, set a date, and make sure you see your goals at everywhere. Um, I have a, I have, I have a, an old iPhone that I had when I was in my earlier 20s, and I've had it since my earlier 20s. And on the lock screen of that, of those, of that iPhone, I have my two-year, my five-year, and my 10-year goals on that lock screen. So I created my two-year, five-year, and 10-year goals. And as I look at those 10 years, that five and two year goals, I've been able to accomplish a lot of those goals, mainly because I put them at a time and you can make your goals as big as you want. It's up to you. You, you never limit your dreams, never limit, limit your goals. Have the biggest goals in the world for you because you can achieve them. It just takes the necessary time. And if you don't hit the date that you want to, for those goals, Extend the date, but continue to put the effort to accomplish it, and you shall succeed. 
what is planted must grow. And so don't let the expectations and opinions of other people affect your decisions. It's your life, not theirs. Do what matters most to you. Do what makes you feel alive and happy. Don't let the expectations and ideas of others limit who you are. If you let others tell you who you are, you are living in their reality, not yours. There is much more to life than pleasing people, and there is much more to life than following other prescribed paths. There is no such more, there is no, there is no, there is so much more to life than what you experience right now. You need to decide who you are for yourself. And that is so critical because we're all taught, or many of us are taught, go to school, get good grades, go to college. And what have may have worked for our parents or for our elders may be different for us. And I say that because when I first graduated high school in 2011, I heard the same thing, go to college, go, to, go get good grades, and, and go be somebody. And I didn't come from a household that had the finances to go to college. So I put myself, me and my sisters, we all put ourselves in thousands and thousands of dollars of debt to go to college. And I highly recommend getting edu being educated. Education is, is a ticket out of, um, you know, ticket out of the ghetto or the mental the mental environment that we put ourselves in or we are we are in but we're into 2000 we're headed into that headed into the 2020s and this is the time of information we have google we have youtube we have facebook we have linkedin we have all the different social media platforms and in outlets to gain the information that we must for our own lives so for the life that you want to have the goals, the job that you want to have, the business that you want to have, someone in the world has already done so. And there's enough books out there, enough knowledge out there for you to be able to do, do something similar, if not better, without putting yourself in so much, so much debt. I put myself in over $44,000 of college debt, and I was able to get myself out of that by just getting myself into a better position in life and realizing that not everyone has to go down this road there's so many different paths and there's so many different ways of being successful and what we define as success and so whatever you plant in your life it will grow but you must know what seed it is and once you define the seed that you want to be watered it will grow in the life that you want to have and so what i'll what i have for everyone i'll give it to hecker and we can give it to I'll give people access to the, how to create their 30, 60, 90 day plan. Um, it taught, it'll break it down to what actions you will take to hold yourself accountable. It'll be a measure, it'll be your measurable criteria, the support you will need. And how, you, how will success look like in 30 days? How will you feel at this point? And how will you reward yourself? Again, rewarding yourself is very critical because sometimes we'll We'll hit a goal and we'll go for the next goal rather than just realize that, hey, we were able to do it. And because we sometimes forget that the success that we wanted to have, we now have, and we don't actually acknowledge it anymore that we, that we experienced. So this is, I'll be giving people access to this. You guys are able to print it, have your own, have your own documentation of this, but having a crate, a 30, 60, 90 day plan. And um, as I've been able to build myself and strong myself and change my energy, I've had some successes. Um, I created a couple of organizations. Um, I created a movement called Pose with the Cops, and it's a documentary where I create where we're changing the narrative between policing and community. All of this, so we see all the things that were happening in the world. And so I, I partnered with a couple of police departments, and I meet with cops. I'm on the hiring panel, and I've been able to put my best foot forward, have my voice being heard. Um, and we have a diverse perspective being heard in the communities um, at large. Um, this right here is my mint, my little mentee. Um, he's a 14-year-old entrepreneur in, in, from North Minneapolis. He has a, a lemon, uh, He has a hot dog stand that went viral. Someone called uh, the health department on him instead of Minneapolis to, to deciding to close close uh, his shop down. Minneapolis decided to give him a, a business license. Uh, his story went viral. He happened to go on. The Steve Harvey Show, he, his story went viral. He, he you know, 300,000 views on, on his YouTube page as a 13 year old kid. Uh, in 2017, we, um, I partnered with a couple organizations. 
and we create we found out that 30 percent of college graduates who have visible and invisible disabilities go unemployed and after they graduate college so these are people who have disabilities physically and invisible or they're mental have the college degrees but not have the opportunity to land them to get them the jobs they want so we did a job fair we partnered with comcast and a bunch of other organizations to help get these people get these individuals um, into key roles and key jobs again i've been doing a lot of work with the police and community having tough conversations on how to address things we've been doing um, been blessed to publish my second book and share it to the world with a lot of other like-minded entrepreneurs and this was the home that after i persisted um, i finally got my very first rental property uh, after seven three home showings after looking at 73 homes from May of 2019 until September of 2019, I was able to finally find my very first rental property. My, my renters moved in on November 28th of this year, and um, we're now in a better position. And just again, put them, I mean, I'm now in the next stage of my, of my career of living mortgage rent-free, uh, writing books, speaking, and tackling the things I want to tackle in my own personal life and helping others do something similar. And you guys are able to check out my book called The Essence of Inspiration. These are the, uh, the hashtags and movements that I've started. So you're able to go on Facebook or Instagram. You're able to see the documentary called Pose with a Cop. You're able to check out my hashtag where you'll keep up, keep up with me. And then I created a movement on Instagram, which is called Post a Video a Day, which is um, at the beginning of 2019, I wanted to hold myself accountable. In the world of content and you know motivation, we have to stay relevant, or we have to put ourselves in a position where we're we're behind the camera. And I looked at my camera, I looked at myself in on YouTube, and I hadn't made a video since 2017. And at the start of 2019, I said I'm going to do something different. So uh, what I did was I. I created a movement called hashtag post a video a day, which is I post a motivational video a day or I create a video every single day. And if I miss a day, um, someone, and if someone notices that I missed a day, they'll win money. And I literally just wanted to hold myself accountable. I really wanted to do something similar, something like that because no matter what has happened, no matter what happens in your life, if you say you're going to do something, do it. And help, help, if not your partners, and your and your friends and your in the world in the world hold you accountable. Have the world hold you accountable. And so I created the post of video day just to wake up a positive e every single day because I believe that if you wake up with a positive attitude, no matter what you're going through in life, you will experience those positive experiences. And that's my time. I really want to appreciate everyone from the One Life community. Go out there in 2020 and rock the world and do your best to be positive. And I really appreciate everyone for having um, joining this chat and this call. Thank you so much, Daenerys. That was uh, that was fantastic. I was <clears throat> it's not live tweeting anymore. I was live Instagram storying some of the great um, slides that you had on uh, throughout there. And so, um, if it's possible, if you could send us the um, those slides there, I know you mentioned that you'd get the uh, the thirty, sixty, and ninety day plan for our uh, community as well. So, if you guys um, have questions specifically for Daenerys, go ahead and throw them there in our our chat. And um, we, uh, we definitely can get to them. I want to thank you, Denarius, for being such a, a big part of this community. And I encourage you guys to go out and follow him on Instagram and connect with him on Facebook. He's someone who is uh, definitely active there on, on social media. And so <clears throat> uh, feel free to drop any questions there that you have into, uh, into the chat. <clears throat> and we'll make sure <clears throat> excuse me, that, we'll, uh, that we cover them as well. And the replay and all of the resources will get sent out in the uh, email follow-up and we'll also host them on the <clears throat> One Life Mighty Network as well. <clears throat> Tim, any, uh, looks like we have a couple of questions here. <clears throat> so I wanna take a, a question from, uh, from Willie and if you could give us, you know, Denarius, the, we got a few questions here, so maybe the, the 60 second answer here. Um, Willie's question is, how long did it take you to obtain your positive mental attitude? That's such a good question. Um, the, to attain your, uh, my, how I attain my positive attitude, it literally is every day. It is a lifelong thing because 
Um, but I would say it took me at that time really understanding that just being positive. It took me three months, three straight months of just really being positive. And it just became a habit. And it, can be, it really has become a no-brainer just to wake up or do my best to always keep a smile on my face. I carry a smile-driven energy. So it took me three months. So if you're very adamant towards it, it can happen a lot sooner for you. But you really have to look at your circle and what brings you down and why, what, you know, why your, your intuition is bothered by either the people in your circle or bothered by how, who you are. And just know that being positive literally is a lifestyle. You have to wake up, listen to affirmations, listen to motivation on your commute, stop listening to music on your, your way to work or the grocery store, put on a, an audio book. Um, I listen to at least six audio books a month. Um, each audio book is roughly six hours to nine hours. So you can learn a lot just by just changing your habits um, and doing your best to put your best foot forward. Fantastic stuff. Um, guys, like I said, I want to encourage you to go out and connect with Denarius. He was someone who spoke at this year's conference. And after uh, hearing the, the response and getting a chance to see what his message was about, I think that um, it was uh, the right decision to have him come on and, and share this stuff with you. Tim said, um, great stuff. I'd, I'd love for you to, um, you know, Denarius, uh, share in the if you can in the facebook community a little bit about fulfillment and if you want to go in and share any of your um you know about your books and stuff like that i think that would be a great place to pick up and keep the conversation going uh as well i do want to take a uh, a few minutes um just to remind and um uh, notify people of just some cool things that are happening in the One Life world and what's coming up in 2020. So this past year, we had our annual conference. And what was exciting is we were able to bring uh, a few hundred people together down here in Southern California. And this year in 2020, we are, are taking that on the road. And so um, One Life is going to be at uh, <clears throat> a variety of different stops. We're going to be having the actual tour dates released in the coming days. But our next opportunity for you guys to come out and get connected with the One Life uh, community live in person is at our Sacramento 2020 One Life Roadmap Workshop. And uh, it's February. Uh, it's actually happening February 25th up in, um, obviously, Northern California in Sacramento. And what we're doing is every... Um, dare to dream stop, right? Every place where we're going in and working with the kids and working with the young people, and now we're expanding it to uh, juvenile detention centers and, um, you know, new really uh, released citizens and, and helping going into a lot of these communities and a lot of these organizations where people really need um, a lot of what Daenerys talked about today and a lot of it, you know, what we, we talk about here at One Life. And so at each stop um, where we go in and work with these different programs and schools and organizations, we'll be hosting a workshop for all of the sponsors and all of the people who make that possible. And it's like a, it's like a mini conference and it's a, you know, a condensed um, version of a conference. It's one evening where we're going to go into everything about the core four and you'll be able to work on your vision plan and you'll be able to dive into uh, the relationships that you have going on and learn about finances and wellness and connect obviously with the other one lifers and there'll be a ton of uh, you know, one life experts, and, and then obviously uh, a group, a large group from the one life community as well. And so, our next uh, workshop is Sacramento, and then we also have another one in Los Banos as well. And so, look out for, for those um, details. If you go to onelifefullylive.org slash Sacramento, you can go in here and, and register and, and get signed up. And we encourage you to bring uh, your family, if, if you're a business owner, bring your employees, um, you know, bring your partner, um, your husband, your wife, or, or really anybody who you feel needs one life in, in their life. And, and obviously, uh, it goes towards creating um, an amazing program like One Life Dare to Dream. So we just wanted to make sure that you guys were informed um, and in the know about what's going on at the beginning of 2020 as well. So Tim, I want to kind of bring you back in here and, and kind of open it up to you. And if there's anybody who is still here on the call uh, as well to share, um, you know, whether it's thoughts on uh, the call today or uh, what we have coming up in 2020. Uh, feel free to take a, a few minutes here, Tim. Sure. 
So if, um, if anybody has it, wants to chime in themselves, I'd love to hear from you all. But uh, I was really struck by Daenerys. He kind of reminded me of me at his age. Uh, uh, they, they used to say, I didn't know it can't be done, so I was out doing it every day. And that's what Daenerys is. I didn't know it can't be done, so I'm out doing it every day. And, and that's just the mindset of, of this fail forward. If anyone was that big Dixon, the circus performer, and the lights go on and you're holding on to the trapeze, and you got to fly across the, uh, the, you know, across the stage, across the, and, and then let go of the trapeze and trust that it's going to be there. And those are the kind of things, you know, that, that Daenerys is talking about that is, that's made a, a wonderful life for himself. And you guys, we all know this stuff isn't easy. And, and everything he said today, boy, I'd go back and listen to this again, because there were a lot of nuggets there just on mindset. And, and it's just so cool for me to have a, a young person from the next generation, uh, with such a wonderful curiosity and and hard work and just get it and 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 it's people like you Daenerys that give me a lot of hope for the for humanity and for the next generation so keep up the good work and if anybody has any other um, comments you'd like to add let me know so it looks like Austin uh, chimed in with a, uh, with a question here. And, and Tim or Daenerys, you guys can, can feel free to answer. But he says, when you find yourself with negative thought or energy, what exercises do you use to stray from that uh, negativity and stay positive? Or, or what do you tell yourself? What do you do or tell yourself? Um, so I, I'm glad you say this because I, I just learned this, uh, another technique uh, recently when I was being with a business colleague. You must say a, a race, cancel um, and you, you must say, you must say this, like if you start to have a negative experience, you have to do this in under 15 seconds. So you have to be very conscious behind it, but you say a race, cancel, and then affirm what you want to actually happen or affirm the positive experience that you want to experience. So a race, cancel, and then what you want to experience. So, um, if I have a experience, so like, oh, I'm thinking negative, oh, I look fat in this outfit or I don't look good. Cancel, a race, I look magnificent i look beautiful i am powerful so you really just want to switch it up really quick and you will start it'll, it, it become it'll, it can become a game if you do it the right way but i understand that completely or our, our thoughts like i'm driving in my car sometimes you know people drive crazy and i'm like what if i get in a car crash and i just erase it because i don't want to get in a car crash and i just say i am a safe driver and i am safely getting to my destination so you just want to say a race cancel and then the things you positively, will positively want to experience. Great question there. And uh, I love that. Daenerys, you said it was, can you repeat the it, it, it erase and cancel? What was the, what are the, the two? You want to erase, number one. You say, you say, I erase this thought, I cancel this thought. And then you want to affirm the action that you want to experience or the experience that you want to experience. Beautiful. Thank you, Austin, for, for sharing that and bringing that question out. <clears throat> uh, the rest of you guys, I, I realize that we are a few minutes over here. And so I thank you for spending some time with us every, every month here. And we do these uh, for you guys. And so we, we appreciate the questions and we appreciate the insight because we want to make sure that these calls are, are hitting on the topics and are answering the questions that you guys are, are that you guys care about and that's relevant to you. And so um, we always uh, appreciate you guys being a part of these calls and helping them to um, be as valuable as, uh, as they are. So as, uh, as we wrap up here, I'm going to go ahead and, and kill the recording. Thank you guys for hanging out. And next month we are, are here um, January 8th. So we'll be probably talking about a, another uh, vision planning. We'll, we'll be announcing our guests in the next coming days. But we are always meeting the second Wednesday of every month and um, that starts at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you can count on us being here on uh, the One Life Community Call.